Welcome to Net Touch. In today's video, quick tip, we're actually going to do a honest quick tip, no more than three minutes, I promise. Okay, so we're going to be focusing on how to simulate a click event with just CSS. So you're not going to have too much control, but I'll show you kind of a cool technique that we can use. All right, let's go into our text editor. We have a blank screen and let's just grab something to work with. So I'm going to grab an image and we'll place it within the new HTML5 figure element. So we'll give it an alt of, what was it, EE? Okay, so the figure element is simply a wrapper. It allows you to associate an image with a caption, stuff like that. So you can use the fig caption element. Now traditionally this is, would be used for some kind of caption like this is a photo of blah 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 and that way you associate it with the image when there really wasn't a way to do that before the new HTML5 elements. Now the fig caption in this case I'm just going to have a zoom and say a zoom out button so it's not perfectly matched to a caption though we do want to associate these links with the image specifically so I think that might work. Okay so within the fig caption let's just have an unordered list and we'll have two list items and each one will have an anchor tag and that should be fine. So I'm using the SparkUp or this encoding plugin to accomplish that. So first this one is going to link to Zoom. Okay, so we'll say Zoom. And then the next one is just going to link to nothing and we'll say Zoom out. So maybe this one should say Zoom in. Alright, so what we want to do here now is apply an ID to the element that we wish to affect. So Zoom. Notice the correlation between this and this. So what we're going to do now is within our style sheet, we'll say zoom, and we'll say by default, it's going to have a width of 200 pixels. But now we're going to say zoom target. And what this means is when it's accessed. So when you link to an element by doing this, it's going to link to this page. So we use this traditionally maybe if you want to link to a particular section from your table of contents, you would do something like that and it would quickly snap to that area. But here, and at that point, it would receive the pseudo class, the target pseudo class. But now, with CSS3, we can, we can style it differently if it's clicked. So in this case, why don't we set the width to, I don't know, 400 pixels. And we'll also use some WebKit transitions just for fun. So WebKit transition. And we're going to transition the width over the course of one second. And we'll just keep it with WebKit for now. All right, so if we view this in the browser, and we want to make sure that we do view it in a WebKit browser or Firefox 4. So it doesn't look like these are connected, but then if I wanted to, I could come back to my page and if I wanted to say, get the figure element and set a background color of E3, 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 which is a grayish color. But you might find that you're not gonna see it take shape. So let's see if I'm right. Yeah, notice how that's not showing up and it's because some of the HTML5 elements don't have default styling. Uh, from the browser. So I want to make sure with this HTML5 element, I make sure that it's set to a block level element. And now it's set like that. And then if you wanted to wrap its contents, let's do the old float technique. So now when I click zoom, you can see that we're using a click effect, but it's only with CSS. And notice that this hash was applied. And when that does, the target pseudo class will take effect. And now if I hit zoom out, this is also a cool effect. I learned this one actually from, from Chris Courier where if you just click it, it's automatically going to go back to its default state because at this point, you're linking to nothing. So at that point, zoom will no longer be the target. But that's an easy way to simulate click effects with just CSS. Now, browser compliance, you're gonna have IE8, Firefox 2 and up, you're gonna have Safari, you're gonna have Chrome, you'll have Opera 10. Uh, this will not work in IE6 and 7, unfortunately, but in this case, it's really not too necessary. So you might want to use some form of JavaScript feature detection or maybe set the display to none in IE7 and 6 using a conditional style sheet. Okay, that is my quick tip for the day, so let me know what you think. For more tips and tutorials, always visit NetTets. Okay, bye.